Hey everyone, since we'll be talking about parenting today, I thought I'd bring my dad along. Oh, not, not this again. What, you trying to diss me again? Go get him. <laughs> In today's tutorial, we will be getting into some basic parental issues with Adobe After Effects. No. Parenting is the basic principle of linking one layer to another layer in terms of its position, scale and rotation, collectively referred to as the transform. If you then move, scale or rotate the parent layer, all of the children will follow the movement of the parent automatically. Parenting is also essential for camera tracking. If you have tracked a moving camera clip, you will usually end up with a null object that tracks a specific visual element in your shot in terms of position and rotation. You can then add other elements like blood splatters or explosions into your composition and by parenting them to this null object, they all will follow the movement of the camera correctly. Now, let's check out how easy all of this is to do in After Effects. I have an empty composition here. First, let us set up some simple shapes that we can work with. In the toolbar, click and hold on the Shape tool and select the Star tool option from the drop-down menu. Over on the right side, you can specify the fill and the outline color for your new shape. I am going to choose red for the fill and leave the outline color at white. Bump up the stroke width to around 15. Now click and drag in your preview window to create a fancy shape. Note that the star rotates as you move your mouse around. You can hold down the shift key to lock down the rotation of your shape. I will create a fairly large star near the center of my composition. Make sure the layer is selected and press the Enter key to rename it. I will call this layer Large Star. Next, press R on your keyboard to reveal the rotation property. To animate the rotation without using keyframes, we will use a simple expression. Alt click on the stopwatch icon next to the rotation property and in the text editor that appears type Time Star 30. Then click anywhere outside of the expression text editor. This expression updates the rotation of the star every frame to be the current time value multiplied by 30. If you scrub through the footage, we can see the star rotate. Of course you see that the star does perform a pretty drunken rotation because the anchor for the shape does not sit in the exact center. You may notice that the anchor for our large star is at the bottom right corner. To reposition the anchor, go to the toolbar and select the pen behind or anchor point tool. Then click and drag the anchor to the exact center of the star shape. Scrubbing through the footage now, the large star should rotate nicely around its center. Go back to the beginning of the composition and position the star in the exact center of the screen. Now duplicate the layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D. Move this star off to the right side and scale it down to about half the size of the large star. I will also change the fill color to a calming blue and change the stroke width to 10. Rename this layer to small star. If you scrub through your footage, you will see both stars rotate happily about their centers. Now let's get on to parenting. In the layers window on the left side of your timeline, you will see a column called parent. This is where you can specify how the layers in your composition are related. There are two ways to assign a parent. You can specify the parent of a layer by selecting it from this drop-down list. Note that the small star can only be parented to the large star and vice versa. Alternatively, you can parent one layer to another by using this pick whip icon. Click on the pick whip icon for the small star and drag it onto the large star layer. Let go and you should see in the parent column that the small star is now parented to the large star. What this does is it will link the two layers together and any transformations on the large star either to the position, scale or rotation will also be applied to the small star. The child will always follow the movement of the parent. Any repositioning or scaling you apply to the large star will automatically affect the little star. You can imagine an invisible link going from the anchor position of the parent to the anchor position of the child, kind of enforcing their relationship. If you now scrub through your footage, you will see that the little star does not only rotate around its own center, but it also rotates around the large star. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's kick it up a notch. Select the small star, duplicate it, and move the copy over to the left side. Duplicate it once again and position this copy above the large star. Repeat once more to totally surround the large star with the little ones. All four small star layers are parented to the large star. 
Note that you can bulk assign a parent. If you select all the small star layers, changes to any of the parent properties will be applied to all of the selected layers. This works either by selecting a new parent from the combo box, here I am clearing the parent, or by using the pick whip icon to link all of them back to the large star. If you play back the composition now, you should have a little spinning galaxy with four small stars rotating around the parent and around themselves. Technically that's all there is to parenting, but let me show you a few more cool things you can do with it. Select the large star, move it to the left side of the composition and scale it down. As expected, this will also scale down all of the stars that are linked to it. Now select all layers and duplicate them by pressing Ctrl D. I'm going to drag all the duplicated selected layers to the top of my layer list so they get grouped together nicely. Move these five shapes over to the right side of the composition. You should now have two spinning galaxies. Select one of the large stars, duplicate it and position this copy in between the two galaxies. Scale it up a little bit and rename the layer. I will call this one very large star because I'm just feeling immensely creative today. I will also move this layer to the top just to keep things organized. Now for the cool part. Select the two large stars and parent them to the very large star, essentially creating a parenting hierarchy. If you play back your composition now, all stars should rotate around themselves as well as around their respective parent. Pretty cool what we created with nothing more but a simple rotation animation and some parenting. Let's quickly talk about compositions and parenting. If you don't know how compositions or pre-composing works, check out my tutorial on the topic that I did a few weeks back. For now, I'm going to delete the five shapes on the right side of the composition. Select the five shapes on the left side and pre-compose them. I will call this new composition Star Comp. Duplicate this composition layer by pressing Ctrl D, then select both Star Comp layers and parent them to the very large star. Actually, let's be smart and move one of them over to the right side so you can actually see it. If you now scrub through your composition, it will look exactly as it did before, but the contents of the composition are organized a lot neater and we're just being a bit more intelligent about reusing elements. Now, there are certain situations in which parenting and pre-composing do not actually work well together, and that is when you're working in 3D. Here's another empty composition. As before, create a large red star in the upper middle of the composition. Remember to use the pen behind tool to reposition the anchor point in the exact center of the star. Duplicate this layer to create a small star that sits directly below the big one. Again, I'm going to change its color to a more calming blue. Give the layers useful names as we did before. Now duplicate the small star four times and line the five stars up next to each other. Now let's get all 3D. Actually, if you would like me to do a proper tutorial on 3D and After Effects, just leave a comment below and I'll put it on my list. Select all six layers in the composition and reveal the switches column. If you cannot see this column, you may have to click the toggle switches and modes button at the very bottom of the application window. Click and drag on this column here, which enables the 3D switch for all of your layers. If you scrub through your footage, nothing has really changed, but everything is now positioned in 3D space rather than in flat 2D. Let me prove it to you. Go to the top view. You can do this by selecting top from this combo box just below the preview window. This is what your stars look like from the top. Select the small star in the center and move it down a little bit. Then select the two stars to its side and push them back a little bit. I want to spread the five little stars out as evenly as I can around the central large star. Now return to your active camera view by selecting it from the drop down box. Everything looks like it did before except the stars that are further away from the camera are a little bit smaller, as you would expect. Let's parent all of the small stars to the large star. For this again, select them and use the pick whip icon to link them to the big red star. If you now rotate the large star around its Y axis, you will notice that all of the small stars rotate around it in 3D space like a spinning Christmas tree. Now let's assume we want to be clever again and as before, pre-compose all of the small stars into a single composition. Let's first unparent them, so select all of the small star layers and change the parent to none. Ensure all of the small star layers are still selected and then pre-compose them. I will call this composition 5 star comp because it's just that good. Ensure that you enable the 3D switch on the 5 star comp layer and then parent it to the large star. Everything back to normal? Not quite. Watch what happens when we now rotate the large star around the Y axis. All of our 5 small stars have been squished together onto the surface of the new composition. This is why you have to be careful when combining compositions and parenting while working with 3D layers. 
Finally, to unbore you and get rid of all of the stars in front of your eyes, let's set something on fire. I have a simple handheld shot here where I'm panning across some farmland. Besides the footage, I have one other element in the shot and that is a null object. The footage has been tracked and the null object has been made to follow this power pole throughout the shot. Now I have a separate tutorial on camera tracking that you can check out if you want to learn more about it. For now, just note that this null object cleanly follows the movement of the power pole. Let's add some fire into the fields. I am using stock footage from the Actions Essential package here, but as always I will put a few links to free stock footage elements in the descriptions of the video, so do go check that out. Let's drag this fire element into our scene. Hot stuff! Scale it down a little bit so it suits your scene a bit better and position it somewhere on the ground. I am going to apply a very rough mask to the bottom of the fire element to make it appear as if it sits behind the grass. I know I'm doing a really sloppy job here, but I just want to show you the useful aspects of parenting. I will set this mask to subtract and give it a little bit of feathering. If I now bring back the opacity of the fire element and zoom out, it will, to some degree, look like the grass is on fire. If we now parent this fire element to our null object that we tracked, we will cause the fire element to follow the movement of the null object. And since the null object is moving along with our footage, so will the fire, making it look like the fire is a part of our actual scene. Now of course you'd want to spend some more time color correcting this fire and making it sit a little bit nicer in the scene, but I think you get the idea and hopefully you understand why parenting is such a powerful tool in Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and as always please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more and you can also stop me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, go get him. Yeah.